I'm going to talk about regulated buy to let. This is where you are going to buy a property and rent it out to a family member. So I hope you find this useful. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Hi, it's Pime here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Please do like and subscribe. We're now going to talk about renting to your family. Okay, it was quite interesting actually because I was on um, I was on one of the forums for the these property sort of training people uh, on Facebook on one of the forums and somebody put out there, can you rent to a family member and what is it like? And someone else said, no, you can't. Uh, most uh, buy to lenders do not allow that. And I went back and said, well, actually, you can. Uh, and that sort of made me think, well, yes, you can, but there are lots of rules around it. Uh, and I thought it would be a good topic to talk about because the, it is quite complicated and you've got to know your stuff on this one. So let's assume that you want, and, I, and I've done many of these over the years. Um, uh, let's assume that you, are, you want to buy a property for your mum, for your daughter, for your sister, okay, for your dad, for your brother, okay? You want to rent that property out to them, okay? What do you do? Because your average Joe lender will not be able to do it because they don't lend on uh, this type of transaction. They don't actually have the authority or regulatory permissions to do regulated buy to lets. What this means is regulated buy to let means it falls under the Financial Conduct Authority's rules, which means if you are buying a property for a family member, um, then that's deemed to be regulated and it's got a lot more um, uh, precautionary sort of compliance things around it. Um, and hence, a lot of the lenders have said, look, we don't want this. We don't want, we don't want that smoke. We don't want it. So what's happened is, let's say the buy to let market's got 90 lenders on there. There's probably only about eight to 10 lenders that are doing regulated buy to let. So then you think, thank you very much, Payam. I know what you've told me now. You've told me it's called regulated buy to let. And I'm now going to go and Google it and I'll find the lenders. Great. Happy days. Go and do that. Okay. But let me tell you how regulated buy to let works. The way regulated buy to let works is, um, yes, fundamentally, you have got a list of lenders that will allow you to rent to that family member. Okay. But there are certain criteria that needs to be met. Generally, criteria number one, the deposit money and the source of funds need to come from you. Okay. Some lenders would say it could come from your sister if you're going to buy it for your mother to live in, but it cannot come from your mother. So your mum can't say, do you know what? I can't get a mortgage, but it's 50,000 pounds. Can you put it down as a deposit and I'm going to rent it from you? The source of funds cannot come from the person who's going to be your tenant. Okay. Now that rule is different. Some lenders will say, we don't accept any gifted deposit on regular regulated buy to let. The funds need to be from you. Others will say, well, as long as it's not this person who's going to live in the property, we're okay. So that's rule number one. Rule number two, generally the lenders want you to be an owner occupier. What that means is the person who's going to buy the property to rent out needs to have their own residential mortgage at least or residential property at least, okay? So owner occupier is another rule. Then the lenders will have, generally they have minimum income. Now in a standard buy to let, I've got lots of lenders that don't have a minimum income for normal buy to lets. However, when it comes to a regulated buy to let, because you're gonna rent it out to a family member and what happens if that family member doesn't pay up, you might go through hardship, you can't really kick your mother out, so the lender wants a little bit more reassurance around your income. So they've put minimum income requirements, generally between 20 to 30 to 40,000 pounds income requirements, okay? So you've got to meet those requirements. Then you look at the lending choices, okay? So say out of those 10 lenders, okay? The way they treat regulated buy to is completely different, okay? And this is fundamentally what, um, uh, what I get a lot of questions about, okay? Just because a lender says they will allow you to rent to your family member doesn't mean it's a viable option for you, okay? What I mean by that is a lot of those lenders, they will still work affordability out, almost like a second home. So let's say the mortgage is a thousand pounds a month. Let's say they'll take in your salary, the running cost of your own mortgage, 
the running cost of your own bills, the running cost of the other property, and they will say, well, is it affordable? So they're not treating it as a full buy to let from an affordability perspective. They're not saying, oh, the rent's covering the mortgage, so that's fine. They're saying, no, you need to cover both properties. So that's one batch of lenders. Another batch of lenders, so if that doesn't work, there's another batch of lenders that will say, we'll still do the affordability, but we'll take some of that rent into account. So it's not going to be the whole thing. If it services itself, we still need affordability. We'll still run the affordability, but we'll take some of that rent that your mother, father, whoever it is, is paying into account. So that's another batch of lenders. The third batch of lenders, what they will do is say, no, we'll just treat it as a buy to let. So as long as the deposit's coming from you, you meet our requirements on a criteria of minimum incomes and uh, owner, uh, owner occupier, will allow you, if it's self-financing, based on their own rental calculation, if it's self-financing, we will not do any additional affordability checks on your income and your viability, as long as it's paying for itself. So those are the three ways lenders look at regulated buy-to-lets. Um, so, and that's really important. Let's talk about some of the most common things. They're normally building societies, so they're an absolute pain to deal with, one. Okay, sorry building societies, but a lot of you are uh, smaller lenders, uh, bespokely written, and that's what you want, because they bespokely writ write a lot of these cases. That's why they're looking at things outside the box. But you've got to take it with a, with a pinch of salt, that generally their service is not as great as some of the automated lenders out there. It's just common sense. Two, the rates are not that great, okay? What I mean by that is, let's just say you can get a normal buy to let at 2%, you'll probably be paying 1.5% extra to rent to a family member. And a lot of the products are not fixed rate products. They're normally discounted rates. So what they are, uh, maybe a two or three year discount of the lender's fee. So they say the lender's fee is 5% generally, they will do a discount by 3%, so you're paying 2%. That's a wrong example. I've got, to, I've got to give you some proper examples. But essentially, and I think I've got some on the website, essentially it's a discount of their variable rate or the lender's rate. So maybe the discounted rate is 6%, sorry, the main rate is 6%. They're discounting 3% off their main rate. So it's not fixed. So it can go up and down. So you don't have that security. Okay. So what do I do? So I look at those three options, and there is a fourth option, and sometimes we do the fourth option. If you've got affordability to buy a second home and have your family live there, do it as a second home. Don't mess around with buy-to-let business. Just do it as a second home. You'll get a better deposit, because normally you'll have to do 25 to 30% deposit on a regulated buy-to-let. You may be able to get that lower on a second home, maybe only 15% deposit. The rate will just be a residential rate. Fantastic. But you've got to have the affordability. And I, I, do, I do that all the time. So it really comes down to um, affordability. comes down to your own circumstances, who the person is, the rent that they're going to be paying. And generally, the lenders will insist it's, it's based on market rent just because, you know, that's, that's the way it is. The surveyor will confirm that. Um, so that's a little bit of information about regulated buy to let letting to your family member it's certainly possible so don't believe what you read on the forums we've done it many many a times and i've got active cases that i'm working on at the moment that are um regulated by to let cases um i hope you found this useful if you have please like and subscribe if you've used this type of scheme before let us know about it um but yeah um please uh, uh watch carry on watching these videos thank you so much really appreciate it the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker before applying. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up your repayments.